Hey guys, it's Cynthia and welcome back to my studio. Two weeks ago, I set out with the intent of reworking this old Alice in Wonderland piece. And at this point, I've shown you how I set my goals for the new piece. I did thumbnails, gathered reference, sketched and painted all the way to about 80% by the start of this video. And now it's time to finish it up. So I'm gonna take you through some of the final details and share some of the thought processes that I go through when I'm finishing my digital paintings. And I also wanna make an attempt at answering the tricky question, how do I know when I'm finished? So I just wanna take a second to set some expectations for this YouTube channel, because I think it's worth mentioning that I'll be bouncing back and forth between digital and traditional media every so often, because I love both and I practice both. And you know, some of you might not be into doing one or the other yourself, and that's okay, but you might be surprised by what you can learn from people who do things differently than you do. Now, if you've never seen the show, Avatar The Last Airbender. You totally owe it to yourself to go watch it sometime, but there's a scene at some point in I think the second season where the old sage Iroh from the Fire Nation performs some really unique and super advanced powerful firebending. And when he was asked where he learned to do that, he learned it from watching waterbenders, which was unheard of because the practitioners of those kinds of magic were at war. And watching that episode recently kind of reminded me of the needless battle I sometimes see going on between digital and traditional artists when instead of fighting, we could just be learning from each other, just like Iroh embracing the other elements and getting stronger for it. So apologies for the tangent there, but let's get back to pixel bending and the journey of getting from 80% to 100%. By 80%, I typically have enough of the groundwork laid that I can work around the piece in pretty much any order I want. So I ended up starting with the hair. That's just what appealed to me when I sat down to dig back into it last week. So that's where I began. And I wanted to capture the movement and the feel of the original hair in the older piece, kind of flowing around Alice's head, but update the realism a bit. So I'm looking at some of the reference that I grabbed in the planning stages to give me shape cues. Like those little curly bits of hair at the end, like those aren't necessarily shapes that I would make with my hand from imagination, so I'm using reference to guide me. Whenever I'm painting something layered, like hair or leaves on trees, I find it's best to start with the darks and use the darks to create larger shapes and then carve out the detail with the highlights. And so that's what I'm showing you here, just sort of the whole process of building up those strands in like larger chunks and then sort of moving on to more of the individual strands later. You never want to get too detailed with hair. You never want to think about it like painting each individual hair on the head. It's more about the clusters of shapes that they create as a whole. And when I'm finishing a piece, I typically end up making a whole lot of little micro decisions that are questions that usually start with, would it be worth it if? Like take Alice's dress, for example, it was probably fine as it was. Like I didn't really have to do anything to it in order to make it a functional like dress shape, but I decided that it was a little busy. And I asked myself, would it be worth it if I go back into the dress and smooth out some of the wrinkles, maybe deepen the blue a little? And since I thought it was pulling the focus just a bit too much, I decided, yes, it was worth it. And I went for it. And then deepening the blue made me ask, OK, now is there enough blue in the background to kind of support the, the heavy blue in the foreground and make the piece feel cohesive? So. I decided, yes, it was worth changing that, and then I cooled it down some. It kind of keeps going like that. It's like my eyes are constantly bouncing around the painting and checking everything and relating each piece to other pieces. And then new questions come up and the process repeats ad nauseum. When talking about the way that I handle my edges at final, I think it's important to note that I tend not to work with lots of layers. Like I've shown you how I use effects sometimes and you've probably seen in my last video where I had kind of my whole um, 
workflow setup on the screen, you saw a few layers kind of developing, but a lot of those were actually flattened down at various points. And then there would be like a global color change or something applied. And then I would just keep painting on top of that. Um, and this is just my preference because one of the things that I like to do is sample from both the subject and the background behind whatever my subject is to control my edges. Like I talked in my last video about where I sample color from within the piece by constantly triggering the eyedropper tool. The same thing is true of refining edges where I can either paint out toward the edge of my subject to create the edge, or I can carve it away by sampling from the background and then sort of like shaving away at the form in order to make a, a different type of edge. And this is also the point where I can figure out whether or not I want to just obliterate an edge or not. Like I had this really sharp kind of line going around the queen's card. And my original intent was to have the queen's ink melting off of her card as she gets defeated. But I thought the melting wasn't really going to come through enough, or if it did, it would look too messy and kind of like screw up the, the body form of the queen. So what I opted for was mimicking the steam coming off of the tea. <laughs> so the teapot's pouring out this like stream of tea and there's steam coming off of it. And I thought, oh my gosh, that would be a really cool way to not only like show that the queen is sort of melting, but also break up that top edge a little bit. So I grabbed a big brush and, and sort of sampled some of the same blue and cool white color that was coming off of the steam and used it to pull away at that top edge a little bit and create sort of the shape that I thought would be uh, coming off of the queen's card if there was a supernatural wind blowing through the whole piece. Another little trick that I sometimes use is putting warm oranges or reds between the fingers or in between lips or nostrils or the crevices of the ears. And this isn't technically correct. And I'm making air quotes here. Uh, it's not correct or accurate to life um, in this lighting scenario, at least, but it follows the logic of where you would see warmth if that part of the body was backlit, because you would see subsurface scattering of the blood beneath the skin, and that gives you that warm glow. I'll borrow a photo from the internet to demonstrate. And you'll barely even see this at final size when this is, you know, printed or shown off on the internet. You're not gonna see details that are this small, like fully, but it's something I used on the queen's hands to make them feel a bit more lifelike and creating a little bit of vibration between the red and the neutral gray. And remember early on when I was doing my value comp, I said that I wanted to keep the lights and darks on the queen in a more compressed range than the foreground. So this actually helps with that too, to keep the shadows between the fingers from getting too dark. So I saved the details on the playing cards for last, and this is like the ultimate example of working from general to specific, which means working in broad areas and then slowly refining down to the smallest details. I thought it would be fun and fit with my story to make all of the suits on the cards hearts this time instead of using the diamonds, spades, and clubs. So the hearts in this case are, idiomatically speaking, the icing on the cake. And one of the most common questions that I and probably every artist gets asked when they show off their final work is, how long did that take? And the real answer is, it's not really that important. Like, being able to work quickly is fine and good, but it's always secondary to the quality and the choices you make. But in case some of you are genuinely interested or just want to, like, compare my time to yours or something to know that you're not excessively fast or slow or whatever. I worked on this part of the painting over the course of uh, three evenings this week. And so the finish alone probably took a total of 15 or 16 hours over the course of those three days. And that's just this video. So I've been working on this piece for three weeks total. And I spent the largest chunk of time planning, which is pretty typical. And I covered that in the first video, but all told from start to finish, I would estimate that this painting took about 50 hours. And if I was working traditionally, I'm guessing it would be at least double that for this kind of level of detail on a painting. 
but uh, I guess my point is uh, it takes time. It takes a lot of time and speed comes with practice. So, you know, that's not really that unreasonable for a painting like this. Which brings me to my main topic today, which is attempting to answer the frequently asked question, how do I know when I'm done? And I've heard a lot of more poetic answers, like my old art teacher from middle school, Mr. Peters, used to say, done is a cooking term, meaning there's no right answer and you should stop asking. <laughs> and some say it's done when I put my signature on it, which is also probably true, but not very helpful if we're trying to find a real answer. So I like to break things down into practical steps and in doing so, I came up with a list of questions that you can ask yourself, whether you tend toward over-rendering like I do and getting really in the weeds with it, or if you habitually stop short of a solid final, answering these questions can kind of help you determine if it's the right time to say pencils down. So the questions I came up with were, is my focus clear? Is my value structure elegant and does it read well when I shrink it way down? Does the final image meet my goals that I set out for myself in the beginning, or did I make a wrong turn somewhere? Is this the best that I can do today? And sometimes when we're sitting in front of a failure, even the honest answer is yes, and we try again tomorrow. Like, you know, what you're looking at on screen right now is a snapshot of where I am in my whole artistic growth arc. And the goal is to keep saying yes to that question enough is this the best that I can do today? So that in 10 more years, I'd do it differently again and better. And I think the most important question is to look all around the piece at every single passage and ask yourself, did I care about this? It's not about detail. It's not about number of brush strokes necessarily either. It's about intentionality. And it's about like, for example, the cards in the background here are very loose. When you zoom in, they're pretty loose and messy, but they were painted with intent. Like I cared about them. And the path of cards that the queen is holding onto are also looser than the ones in the foreground, but I didn't care about them less because they're not as prominent. And so in running this exercise for myself on this piece, I was able to kind of uh, check against those questions and say, yes, I did care about this. Yes, this is the best I can do today. Yes, this image meets my goals and so forth. But my real method though of knowing when I'm done is to go with my gut. Making those questions is kind of like trying to put into words the sub process that goes on in my mind at this point. Like if you're just starting out or if you do have uh, a struggle knowing when it's time to stop working on something, I really do think those are helpful things to ask yourself. So that's where I'm going to wrap this up for today. And I'll be sure to post a link to the final image in the description box so you can check it out without the constraints of YouTube resolution. And thank you so much for watching, guys. I really had fun with this, and I hope you enjoyed watching the whole process of a digital painting evolve from the initial idea all the way through the final. And I also hope you have a great holiday. It's Christmas Eve today, so I have some gifts that I need to go wrap, and I'm going to go enjoy a couple of relaxing days off. So happy holidays to all my viewers and subscribers, and hopefully I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.